Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Lecture 4E, where we're switching from thinking about the problem of X inactivation in females to thinking about the problem of defective alleles on the X chromosome in males. We're going to introduce a couple of new terms, the first of which is X-linked, which means on the X chromosome. We'll talk about males being hemizygous for X-linked genes, that is, they have only one copy. And then we'll talk about why in males um, phenotype is directly determined by what allele of genes on the X chromosome the male has. So as we've said, the X chromosome has about 2,000 genes, many of them fulfilling very important roles in the cell and the organism. And you might think, well, yeah, that's okay. We've all got one copy. We've taken care of the dosage problem by doing X inactivation. But there's another problem, which is that what happens when a male inherits an X chromosome that carries a defective allele? So males have only one X chromosome. So they have only one allele of each X-linked gene. They're not diploid for these genes. For these genes, they're haploid, and we use the term hemizygous to refer to blocks of genes that are all present only in a single copy. Now, we know from Module 3, we talked about how many defective alleles are resistant are, sorry, are resistant, are recessive to their functional counterparts in diploid cells. And this means that for genes that are on autosomes or for genes that are on the X chromosome in females, defective alleles can be often heterozygous with the normal allele and the phenotype will be normal. But in males, for X-linked genes in males, one defective allele is all you have. So one defective allele always causes a defective phenotype. The concept of dominant doesn't apply to X-linked genes in males. So you might be wondering, well, why doesn't this also happen in females because of X inactivation? Because females have only got one functional copy of each X chromosome in their cells, shouldn't they also be effectively hemozygous and not be protected by dominance from the consequences of defective alleles? Well, in fact, in general, females do not suffer from um, the effects of carrying a single defective allele on one of their two X chromosomes. And one major reason for that is that Although the functional allele will be off in some patches of cells, it's on in others. And for many cellular functions, um, either the protein, occasionally, or much more often, the metabolites that are produced as a consequence of the gene product's action are distributed around the body by the bloodstream, so that as long as there are patches of cells with functional enzymes, all of the cells and tissues will receive what they need of the um, metabolites that it's that protein's responsibility to produce. Now, we'll talk more about this in the next lecture when we talk about the genes that cause color blindness. For now, I want you to consider a problem about color blindness. Um, about effects in males and females. So we'll assume that 10%, you know that colorblindness is quite a common defect. And for the purpose of this problem, we'll assume that 10% of X chromosomes carry a recessive allele. That's not quite the right number, but it's close. Carry a recessive allele causing red-green colorblindness. Now, this picture is an example of the kinds of colored images that are used to screen for color blindness. 
um, it's not well controlled because of different colors of monitors, but if you can't see a number in this circle, you're probably red-green colorblind. Now, what I want you to figure out is if 10% of the X chromosomes carry the defective allele causing colorblindness, what proportions of men and women will be colorblind? And the answer is 10% of men will be colorblind, but only 1% of women will be colorblind. Why is this? Well, um, if you think about a man with an X chromosome, he has a single X chromosome, and let's assume that that X chromosome, represented by this line, is drawn at random from the population of X chromosomes in the community. This means that there's a 10% chance that this X chromosome will carry the colorblind defective allele. So men will have a 10% chance of getting the defective allele, and if they get the defective allele, they'll be colorblind because that's the only copy of the gene they have. Females also have a 10% chance of getting a chromosome with a defective allele. But whether they display the phenotype depends on the second chromosome that they also got, which also has a 10% chance of carrying the defective allele. We multiply the probabilities because all of these women, 10% of the total population, only 10% of these women are going to have two defective alleles. So it's 10% of 10%, which is 1% of women, will be homozygous for the colorblindness allele. And 9% of them will be heterozygous. Actually, no, 18% of them will be color heterozygous for the colorblindness allele. You'll learn to do these calculations later in the course. But 1% you should be able to calculate now. So what we've done, we've talked about how in males, defective alleles of X chromosome genes aren't masked by a second normal allele as they would be in autosomal genes or X-linked genes in females. Instead, every male with a defective allele on the X chromosome shows the defective phenotype regardless of whether the allele would be recessive to a wild-type allele or not. So phenotypes caused by recessive X-linked alleles are seen much more commonly in males than in females because in females these alleles are effectively recessive, um, recessive to a wild-type allele in the same cell. Now coming up next, we're going to consider the mechanism that causes a particular X-linked phenotype, and that's that of red-green colorblindness. I hope to see you there.